Thank you for tuning in. This is the Rice Crypto Show, and I'm your host, Rice. And on today's episode, I am joined by fellow content creator, Ben Armstrong, host of BitBoy Crypto and CEO of Facts YouTube channel. Now, before we get into it, this just happens to be your first time ever watching any of my videos. I do encourage you to explore my channel. If you like what I'm doing, you support me by subscribing, smashing that like button, hitting the notification bell so you can stay up to date with my videos as they come out. Also, be sure to follow me on Library where I post exclusive content and you can now check out my Patreon channel where you can support me directly. And I will include links down below. So we're just gonna go ahead and get right into it. All right, ladies and gentlemen, today we are joined by Ben Armstrong, who is also known by BitBoy Crypto. What's going on, Ben, man? I appreciate you coming on the show. Yeah, awesome. Thanks for uh, having me, Ray, to uh, you know, talk about what's popping. Well, I appreciate you making the time to do it. Um, you know, we did do a uh, collaboration together when you invited me on um, Beards and Bitcoin podcast, which I really enjoyed. And I'll include links down below for that. And it's been a long time coming and I'm sorry I had to reschedule every, everything going on. It's like, it's hard to, when you schedule some things in advance, it's hard to really know what's going to be happening during that time period. So I appreciate yeah, being sure. flexible, man. Yeah, no problem. So for people who might be unfamiliar with you, which I'm hoping many people are familiar with you, but for those that may not, um, would you mind kind of introducing yourself and kind of telling everybody how you got involved in cryptocurrency? Yeah, for sure. So I uh, first invested in Bitcoin in 2012. Um, uh, you know, I should really be a meme, uh, kind of the way that old Greg is on Twitter for selling all his Bitcoin when it was 32 cents or whatever. Uh, I sold a lot of my Bitcoin very, very, very early and I made some money, but you know, down the road in 2017, I was watching the price and I was like, man, I feel like a jerk, you know, because I uh, should be worth uh, a lot, you know, right. to say the least. Uh, and I took short-term gains over long-term. So that's kind of the thing that fueled me into getting into content creation because I, I don't want people to miss out on this opportunity for them because I missed out early on and I'm hoping I still have that opportunity. Uh, you know, I've been in the space, you know, creating content in the space for a few years now. So, I, you know, I've certainly taken hold of it, but I don't want other people to miss out on what Bitcoin is, what cryptocurrency is and, and really how it can change your life in, you know, on multiple levels. So I started creating content in the beginning of 2018. I uh, worked on the channel for several years now. Uh, you know, after about two years, I wasn't really growing. And then this year has just been, you know, really phenomenal for me. So, um, you know, it's definitely been nice to get some rewards for all the work I put in on the channel. Yeah. And we'll definitely get into that. Cause I mean, like right now you're hitting at around 61,000 subscribers. And I know, um, I think, about this time last year, you were probably around the 10,000 mark, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I hit, I actually hit 10K in May last year, but then so. I, I barely grew over the rest of the year. I think I had around 12 at the beginning of this year. So how did you ultimately get involved in crypto? I mean, I know you said you did early, but what, right. what got you involved in it? So I ran another business, I ran a very successful online ticket website where I sold concert and event tickets. I did that for years and I was using automated software to post ads on Craigslist and I had like 15 computers running and I was running more than anybody else. So I was like making bukus of money at the time. And what happened is, is that was against Craigslist terms of service, uh, running an auto posting software. So the company that ran this software was a company in Russia and they couldn't answer lawsuit charges in the United States. So I can't shut them down and they didn't have a payment processor. So the company was called Clad G. It's probably still up, cladg.com. I think it probably is. Uh, you, uh, they had their payment processor shut off, so the guy didn't know what to do. So for like six months, he was just letting us run the software for free. And then he was like, I found the solution. It's called Bitcoin. Uh, send us some money, you know, buy this. It was so complicated. People think buying cryptocurrency now is complicated. Go back to 2012. It was almost impossible to try to figure out because there just wasn't education out there to really show you how to do it. So I figured it out. It was a big hassle. I bought a lot of Bitcoin because I was running a lot of software, had a lot of monthly payments. And then, uh, you know, one day in 2013, all of a sudden, you know, in November when the price really pumped like real hard, uh, it may not have been the first time it pumped real hard, but the first time people really knew what it was and it was going, uh, I cashed out. I mean, I 
I think the price went from like 10 bucks to like 200 bucks in a couple of days, something like that, similar to what we saw in 2017. So I cashed out. I was happy. I was like, man, because I had some money in my account and it just blew up. Real excited about it. And, you know, from there, I paid attention to Bitcoin for the next few years. Uh, Mt. Gox happened in 2014, obviously. So when Mt. Gox crashed, to me, I thought crypto was over. I thought Bitcoin was, I at the time had no idea really what the technology was and really the larger idea of, of decentralization and things like that. So I just thought like, well, Mt. Gox crashed, this thing's over. I got a Mt. Gox claim uh, down the road. Maybe I can get some of that money back. Uh, but obviously it proved me wrong and I followed it for a lot of years. Wasn't really getting back invested uh, until 2016, 2017. I got reinvested again after two years of, uh, I, that's not true. I, during that time, there were some times where I had bought some Bitcoin and then, you know, might've sold it a couple months later, depending on whether the price went up or down, but I didn't really have a bag that was hodling. I mean, hodling wasn't a thing. Right. Most people knew what it was back then. So. Well, I mean, I think it's cool that you take in, you're trying to take this experience and turn it into a positive and try to educate other people. And, you know, that's one of the reasons why I wanted to bring you on the show because I mean, as a content creator, you've done a lot, I feel to educate people in the space. So I commend you for that. And I definitely mm -hmm. like to collaborate with people that I feel like are in this for the right reason and not, you know, just shilling and, you know, you know what I'm talking about as far yeah. as some of these content creators out there are concerned. So. Um, now, what do you think happened that caused that huge jump? Like from you to go to like 10K to 61K, did you, were you researching like social media? Were you trying to like figure out stuff on the back end or did, was this just something that happened organically? I just figured it out. You know, that's what it boils down to. I just figured it out. Um, you know, I always think about uh, freestyle rappers, you know, it was like a great comparison because a lot of people, when this first started happening, when my numbers started blowing up, I went from like, you know, 12K to 25K in like a month, something like that. People were commenting like, uh, you know, certain other YouTubers communities were coming on there like, oh, you're really, you know, you need to go easy on buying the views and buying the subscribers and because, you know, in, in YouTube, that's something that happens. People buy yeah, I know uh, fake engagement. Yeah. And so, uh, you know, they were telling me that it was almost like freestyle rappers when somebody's like, nah, you didn't freestyle that. You, you wrote that down. You, you had that memorized, you know, but really they know like, no, I legitimately freestyle rap that. That's the biggest compliment you can give me. So at that time when things really started popping, like I was taking that as a compliment, like this is so great for so for two years straight. I have worked my tail off on this channel and wasn't really getting any growth. I can outwork almost anybody. Uh, the problem is, is I couldn't find the formula that worked. So I finally found for me personally, something that worked, which was writing scripts, reading from a teleprompter, being much more controlled about the way that I talk and not just going on and rambling. You might be able to tell from this interview, I like to talk. But the <laughs> problem is when I get going, it's hard to get me to stop or to get focused. So because of that, writing the scripts really allowed me to not only be very specific about what I want to talk about, but also lay out my content in a way to where something good at the beginning, something good at the end, so something that's interesting in the middle, but maybe not as interesting as the beginning or the end kind of structure. And then as well, like if there was something that let's say I was going to promote or there was a social media channel I wanted people to go to in the past, I would just get to the end of the video and be like, crap, I forgot to do that. I didn't even say what I wanted to say with a script. It's really impossible. I mean, you really lay it out and uh, you know, you get a better cadence and things. And for me that really worked. So I took that, that really started helping a lot. And I started doing some more editing, putting in some more B-roll, putting in some things to kind of spice up my videos. And so now I've just taken that and scaled that to where now I have an office space. I have a full studio. Yes, this isn't a green screen. I got a real neon sign behind me. Um, you know, got some more cool stuff I'm going to put on here. I don't have my good camera for the interview here because I'm on my computer, but bought a really nice, you know, Canon Mark IV camera to really upgrade the quality. So, it, it, and he, here's something, okay. I started my channel right at the peak of the bull market when the price was already going down. I started my channel in January, 2018. We, yeah, I did we not, started at the same time because I started yeah. right at the beginning of January myself. But you, and stayed, I did not, you stayed consistent and grind it. Yeah, yeah. And I, I, I started making regular content every day, like news videos, because it started out as a cartoon. Oh, some people know that. But uh, in March of that year, I started making content. And, uh, you know, so after you know, making content regularly for a long time and not being able to really find that stride. Like it was definitely uh, really frustrating, but starting a channel during that time was very difficult because 
the interest was going away. And I remember hearing stories of like during the bull run, you know, you get 5,000 subscribers in a week, which is funny. I've actually been able to do that in the last couple of months, but there, it was unheard of. It was so easy for content creators in 2017. Uh, I talked to a big podcaster during that time and, and he, I was like, what was your secret? And he was like, I just got lucky. I started making a podcast at the right time, you know? And so it didn't matter how good really things were at that time. You could just throw stuff out there and people were interested. Now what that had, has done is it's caused content creators in the cryptocurrency space to be extremely lazy and feel like we don't have to make the same kind of level of content that other YouTubers and other niches might have to make. So there's very few of us that are in the space right now that are really, and I'm not talking about the, the, the quality of the content itself, like the, the words or the information that's being given, but in terms of the production value, right. there aren't that many people in this space that are, you know, making high quality production because they haven't had to do it before. But as this space grows, that's going to be something that people are going to have to do. And, and I kind of have seen that, uh, you know, by dabbling in some other social media stuff with my, my TikTok account and things like that, that you got to be high quality on everything. So, uh, you know, hopefully by the time, you know, Bitcoin really starts taking off, people will uh, be at the point where, you know, they're, they're raising their production, you know, value. It's just your name alone is not going to be enough to, to really get you going. No, and I agree. I definitely agree. And um, a lot of valid points. And, you know, and it is, it's so time consuming, unfortunately, when it's like, you know, you know how it is when it's just you, you know, and, and yeah. once you start getting to a certain point, then you can start, you know, affording to hire someone else to help you. But in that meantime of trying to grow, and that's, that's where I'm at. Like, I would like to improve everything, uh, better computer, better mm -hmm. camera, better lights, but it's a matter of what I can afford as I do it. So, and that's what I'm yeah. trying to do. And, um, and I'm still trying to find what's going to work for me, but unfortunately I talk about a lot of subjects just that are not very algorithm friendly. So, I mean, I've yeah. been dealing with so much. So that's why I wanted to kind of get your perspective. But the other cool thing that I wanted to bring up yeah, I, I did touch on the fact that you have the Beards and Bitcoin podcast. Um, and we talked about the Bit, BitBoy Crypto YouTube channel. You've also branched out and started a separate YouTube channel, the CEO of Facts. And yeah. that's got 54,000 subscribers. I know you're on TikTok as the CEO of Facts, CEO of Sports, and BitBoy Crypto. And you've been really successful on uh TikTok as well. So before we get into TikTok, do you tell me about CEO of Facts? And before you do, I do want to apologize to anybody who hears a buzzsaw in the background. If you do, as me and Ben were talking before I started, I got somebody doing construction outside my house yeah. and with quarantine going on, there's people doing so much that I can't really prevent it. So I apologize. But yeah, um, what? how did the CEO of Facts YouTube channel come about? So I actually, I dropped the, uh, the other two TikTok accounts, the CEO sports and the BitBoy crypto TikTok account, because I'm, I'm trying to get verified by TikTok. And so I kind of had to like condense down to just one, one account there. So I am on TikTok as the CEO of fax or fax CEO, either way is what people call me. And it's not a fax machine. It's like, you know, information. F-A-C-T-S. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, I was going by BitBoy crypto there for a while and my videos started blowing up and I like started increasing my followers. I got up to like 50,000, 60,000, 70,000. And I was like, I'm just not talking about crypto here. So it doesn't make sense for me to have this brand over here. It was kind of a risk. I said, I'm just going to try to create something new. And so I did. I got the name from somebody in my comment section. You know, somebody, I, I do kind of stories. I do a lot different stuff than a lot of people do on TikTok. There is a, a small niche of us that are like giving, teaching, giving information, facts, cool stuff, horror stories, whatever it might be. Uh, and so in the midst of doing that, somebody said, man, this guy's the CEO of facts. And I was like, you know, I think I like that. And so I applied, made that my uh, username. And then I came up with kind of a cool logo for it and things like that. So I just like, I, I love the fact that I have 2.5 million followers there now. And that wow. I literally, people have made so much fun of me when I started. People made so much fun of me on crypto Twitter for starting a TikTok account. Yeah. Oh, this guy's, oh, this guy does this, this guy, blah, 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 blah. You got to just let the haters talk and just drown them out because they're always trying to bring you down. I've built a brand on TikTok that has more followers on an app that's exploding than literally any person in crypto has combined on any of their social media accounts. And so what that means is that once Bitcoin really starts taking off, like I just did a Bitcoin video on there the other day, 
Like once Bitcoin starts taking off and people are once again interested in it and it's not like that's a scam because even the kids think it's a scam because they hear their parents talk about it. Um, but also the demographics on TikTok are changing. It's also becoming an older and more mature app as well. Uh, recently, the uh, youngest demographic lost 8% of the share on the app and that just shows you that the, the average age is, is rising. So the younger but, kids, are, it's not as trendy to the younger kids and now it's becoming more mainstream to the other yeah. people. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Businesses are starting to use it. It's the new Instagram. I mean, that's just the, the fact. And uh, so it's once Bitcoin really platform. starts- You can't, you yeah, can't once argue it start, that. Starts blowing up, I'm going to be able to bring people into crypto. You know, they already know me. They already trust me. And so I can bring them into Bitcoin and into cryptocurrency. Um, and I'm really excited about when that happens over the next year because I know it's going to. So, um, you know, I, I call it Trojan horse in them, you know. That's cool, man. I mean, I, I really like how you've, uh, how you've just, you know, kind of been able to branch out and do multiple things and be able to take on new territory and, and not worry about what other people are thinking about you. Um, yeah. Now, Something I did kind of want to touch on, and we don't have to go into a lot of detail with this, but um, Chico Crypto. Yeah. So I, I'm curious as to, I mean, I know a little bit of the, you guys have some beef, um, said some things to each other. Um, why is it not dying down? Why is it, why are you guys right now kind of putting out videos about each other? I'm just curious. Well... <sighs> And I know he's not the friendliest guy, um, and I, and I've done my research. I know it's a two man team. Uh, I reached out to him; he was an absolute prick to me. So I'm not here to defend yeah. Chico, um, but I don't like seeing a lot of infighting. And if there's no real reason to, I know he's making jabs, mm -hmm. you know, and maybe okay. he might be continuing to like fuel the fire, possibly. He so yeah, long. I'd like to kind of get your points of view on it. Yeah, he, he won't be for long. Um, so he, I made some videos. Yeah, he made a video about me. Obviously, a lot of people know we got into it on the Cointelegraph thing. A lot of people say, oh, you started it. You said it's craving the bottom of the barrel. That barrage from him was coming one way or the other. That's why I took the first jab there. Uh, we hate each other. We've hated each other since we've known each other. A lot of content creators in the space obviously don't like him for the reasons why you said. It's not because he's exposing people on YouTube. It's because... He is who he is. And behind the scenes, a lot of us know that. And so he tries to put off this image of, oh, it's these other guys that are all shillers and they're all scamming you. And, he, you know, he, he's an improv actor. You give him a picture or a screenshot and he will make up a story. And he gives it to his audience, very nicely delivered, and they believe it. And so they actually kind of think that he's cleaning, he's the janitor of crypto. But unfortunately, that's just not, not the facts. But uh, what I found in doing those videos of actually showing his hypocrisy is that uh, a lot of people in my community, my community is more mature than his. And so my community doesn't like those kinds of videos. His community loves that stuff. And so he makes those videos and attacks people and jabs people left and right and, and it riles his community up. So I was kind of fighting a losing battle making those videos because I was getting attacked by his people, which I already expected, don't care. But then I was having my own community that was like, like you just said, we don't want to see the infighting, yada, yada, yada. So I have uh, totally shift gears on this whole thing. And uh, I'm not making any more videos. But all I can say is that there is a lot going on behind the scenes. And when the shoe drops, everyone's going to know it. Right. I mean, it was suggested to me by, and I'm not going to mention any people's names, but, you know, I've been reaching out to different content creators who have a bigger following than me. And, you know, I mean, I feel like, my content is up to par, but I'm dealing with so much censorship and shadow banning. So I'm like, how can you guys, or how can you help me? What can you teach me? Uh, what can I offer in return? And a lot of, a lot of people, several people, I wouldn't say a lot, several suggested doing like an expose video on Chico. And that's just not my style. Like I don't, even though he was rude to me, like there I didn't see a point in trying to do that. Now, now that you've explained a little bit more of your point of view, I understand. And I appreciate the fact that you're being honest yeah. with how your, your subscribers and followers have reacted and the fact that you're just, um, you're going to stop, stop being public about it. And I'm, you know, I mean, there's nothing wrong with behind the scenes doing what you yeah. need to do, especially if you're finding somebody doing something that's, um, unethical as well. Um, but whoever is doing that research, 
on the channel. Now, I don't do scripted stuff. Now, there may be some things in the future that I may be starting to do some scripted things because I have been thinking about things like you. You know, I mean, not only do I like to talk, but I also smoke uh, herb. And sometimes, you know, that makes you talk even more and babble. So, I mean, doing the script thing, I could tell he's reading a script. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah. I, I don't know how much of the research is on his end or if it's all the other person, the James. I mean, Kellogg he does, he, what, but. I, I believe he does a good bit. I mean, I, I think, uh, I mean. But it doesn't excuse who he is and him no. being, uh, him no. trying to instigate. Like, I, I, I don't understand why he was trying to talk negatively about all the different content creators that were promoting clicks. clicks. It's all about clicks. That's all. Yeah, it is. Well, it's, it's just, I mean, I don't see yeah. why you would want to take that. I, I, I guess see the world differently, but I mean, I get your point. Yeah. I get your I point. I mean, that's, I mean, you see it in other niches. I mean, it's, it's all about clicks. And so uh, that's why on the videos I did, I exposed the hypocrisy and that's all I want people to see is the hypocrisy. Like we're all out here trying our best. Nobody's out here trying to scam people. It's not like we're all involved in BitConnect and it's a giant Ponzi scheme, even though, you know, there were some Ponzi schemes that uh, this person definitely did, did promote. And people see that now, you know, people know he can, he can try to make up stories about me and all this stuff, but people know who I am and they know that I'm not a scammer. And, you know, that's why he had to dig up dirt on one of my friends and make up a story about, about me. And, you know, yeah, I saw all that stuff, crap. But, it was crazy. It's so ridiculous. Like he says, he says, oh, I, you know, D Tron pulled out and they closed the tour and they were scamming people. And stuff. No, no, what happened is we were planning on continuing the tour and we were having conversations with a lot of other companies, including Binance US, about sponsoring the tour and continuing it on. But then the, the pandemic hit. And at that point, it was like, okay, well, pandemic, colleges are closed. No telling when this is, there, there's right. no point to continue to pursue this. They were encouraging people to social distance and stay at yeah. home. You couldn't go around traveling and, and there's educating There's been no conferences. People. You know, there's been no conferences. College has been closed. And so that's when we decided like, okay, we're just going to stop this. But he turns that into like, he's an improv actor. I'm telling you, you give him an object and he will make up any story about it that he can, but you can't libel and slander and defame good people because right. that will come back on you. And, you know, that's unfortunately definitely, uh, you know, probably what is going to happen here. So, um, but the, the, the whole issue revolves around the fact that these are not videos I wanted to make. I held back on making them several times because I've known a lot of stuff. I know a lot more stuff too. I know. Um, and but, I do too. I mean, I get, yeah. I get what you're saying. So, but it just nobody, nobody will stand up to the guy. Like nobody will stand up to him. And it's just ridiculous to me well, that people, you know, bow down to that because his subscriber numbers are going up. So he's getting more powerful with his voice. And by doing that, you know, he can actually cause real harm to people in this space. And I get um, it. Yeah, no, I do. But yeah. it's what's weird about our space. And I don't see this behavior so, so much with other things or I'm just not aware of it. But like, like to give Craig Wright as an example, I mean, he's, he doesn't stand on very like, his evidence doesn't back up any of his claims, but yet right. he still has these people who still, after all the, the information come out. Yeah. So, I mean, it's yeah. like, how do you prevent that? You really, you can't, you know, all you can really try to do is just set a better example. And um, it, it sucks, man. But it's like, if you, sh if you kind of stoop down at that level, you, you kind of got the backlash like you did, you know, and it, it sucks, yeah. you know, I mean, I, I get that you're doing the right thing. Um, I, I mean, I don't mind the backlash. It's just, I, I, I want to do right by my own community. And, um, you know, there's definitely some people that want to see him fail and want to see him off YouTube and want to see him, uh, you know, get roasted and exposed. But at the end of the day, like you said, like, look at the Craig Wright stuff, like as delusional as he is, he still is sticking to this story. Like, Oh no, even those, the, those got signed. I mean, Justin's you know, son, you still have his followers still think he's doing good things. And it's, I don't think the evidence points towards him doing good, good things, but it's just a matter of perspective. And it's crazy, man. It's absolutely well, you're crazy. You're invested in a project. It skews the way you see things, you know? Right. So for some people, they're invested in getting clicks by destroying other people. So it, it doesn't matter the end result of how those people are being harmed or whether or not what you're saying is true. At the end of the day, it just comes down to clicks and then you just come up with justification for why you're saying what you're saying. And, you know, if people like you, you make entertaining videos, then, hey, you know, they're, they're going to believe you, unfortunately. I mean, it's just, it's not just tribalism in cryptocurrency. I mean, it's tribalism in, in the world. We just saw this yeah. giant 
thing on mainstream YouTube between Keemstar and H3H3 podcast, which was a huge deal. Sponsors were getting taken away, all kinds of stuff because they were attacking each other. And YouTube actually reached out to them and told them to stop. So we are, those videos were getting millions of views on them because those are some popular YouTubers. So we do see it in, in other places as well. Unfortunately, as you can see by what's going on in the world right now, like there's just, a, there's a lot of hate. And the bad thing about it is that there's an even larger interest in that hate that yeah. really propels these things to further places. Yeah. And dude, that's a, it's, that's a whole nother conversation. Um, <laughs> For sure. The, you know, and I'd like to have a, you know, an unfiltered conversation with you about some of these things, but the last thing I wanted to ask you in regards to this, this discussion was, um, are there, what are you excited about with cryptocurrency and blockchain? Like, in the foreseeable near future and long term. Oh, I'm just excited for the I told you so moment. You know, that's what I'm excited for. The I told you so moment I, that's coming in the next, you know, 12 to 18 months, if not sooner, where all the people who are like, you talk about Bitcoin for a living, uh, that's a scam. Uh, it'll never make it. You know, it's not like gold, blah, blah, blah. Just waiting for the I, I told you so moment and it's coming. And uh, it's very exciting to think about the you know prospects of where Bitcoin is going to be, uh, let's say in the next you know twelve to eighteen months, and so it, at this point, I think we can all look at the history of Bitcoin and look at all the events going on in the world right now and say, you know, an educated guess, it's probably going to follow similar to what we saw before. I mean, it's tracking right along the same line that Bitcoin was in in you know two thousand and sixteen, uh, before the price really started popping off. So. Because of those, I'm very confident that the price of Bitcoin is going up to six figures. I'm very confident. I see these predictions of 28K, 40K, whatever. I, I, 100K to me is probably the minimum. I, mean, I think we're definitely going, uh, my prediction has been 225K, but you know the stock to flow chart has shown upwards of almost 300K. So uh, I, I think that, look, once Bitcoin hits all-time highs, wherever it goes above that is bonus. You know, well, That will be the I told you so moment when it passes the all-time highs and I, you know, who's not excited about the bull run like if it doesn't come we all just need to quit but i mean i think we all believe it is going to happen no it's definitely going to happen man and we got to thank the federal reserve and the central banks for like basically proving what Making bitcoin is and yeah. like it's a it's just such a good example of saying this is the opposite of what the u.s dollar is and it's yeah. a beautiful thing, man. And uh, so, yeah, definitely, I'm in this for the long term, and I'm in this for the change and the um, the change that you know, and the creative destruction that this technology is going to bring. in. so, I guess before we do wrap things up, was there anything I didn't touch on that you wanted to say, or any final thoughts? Uh, I would just say I know that you mentioned earlier, and I've heard you say uh, similar things before about things about your own channel. You know, and, and this will go to anyone that makes content on YouTube, uh, which is, you know, you just keep working and you just keep grinding. And I know it feels like maybe like people don't like you or they don't like your message or YouTube's doing this or, or this or this. Like, I know it feels like a lot of stuff, but if you just keep putting the work in, eventually you're going to get to where you want to get to, you know? And, and that's what happened for me is making videos every single day, twice a day, a lot of days for two years with almost no results. But then when it happened, it exploded. And I just want to encourage you and anybody else that might be interested in making content. Like, you know, at some point it's going to happen. And when you get to that next level on YouTube where your numbers start clicking in the algorithm, then you're off to the races and then you can see what's working and you can kind of scale that. So I think you do a great job with your channel. I know you got a lot of good informative uh, interviews and things like that. So I uh, definitely appreciate you having me on. I do. Thank you, man. And those words like that means a lot. Um, you know, I mean, I, I'm definitely in this for the long, long game. And um, the one good thing I'll say with my slow growth is that I'm getting such good quality, um, such good interactions. I can't, you know, thank my particular subscribers enough that just interact with my channel. It's for, for the small thing it is, it's, uh, it's definitely got so much good quality to the people that watch my content. So yeah. Um, thank you for those words, man. And again, I appreciate your time and I'll have links down below for anybody who might be unfamiliar or if they didn't know you're on TikTok and didn't know you had another YouTube channel. So again, man, I really appreciate it. I'm going to go ahead and wrap things up. And if you can just bear with me one second, ladies and gentlemen, this is your first time ever watching any of my content. Be sure to explore my channel. If you like what I'm doing, you can support me by subscribing, liking, commenting, and sharing. Check out my library channel where I post exclusive content and you can support me on Patreon, and I will have links down below.
And as always, I encourage you to be the change by practicing change.